Hi everyone and welcome. This is the first set of videos that I'm gonna be creating to help you get started with the RTEM challenge uh, competition where there's 55 grand worth of prize money to be potentially won by the analysis of large amounts of time series data from many, many buildings. Uh, these, set, these series of videos are going to help you get started if you're just a new a beginner, let's say, to uh, using Python or programmatically accessing an API, uh, the, the analysis, exploration, and uh, the use of the data for the hackathon that hopefully these videos will help you get started. Uh, so let's dive right into it. Uh, this is the website of the hackathon itself. You've probably been through this to sign up. I'm not going to go into detail about this, um, but I do want to talk about the first, the interface that you'll be given access to when you uh, sign up for the hackathon. You'll be giving a, a way to log in to this platform, which you can see here, that has different types of information of getting started, the documentation, uh, data model, uh, and sort of information about the API client. But the one thing that you're going to need right away when you get started is what's called an API key. And in order to do that, you can open your uh, account, which is in the menu on the upper right hand corner. Here you can see the profile. In order to log in, you would have had to create a dual factor authentication device. I use a Google Authenticator app in a sense. You then go to this tab up here called API keys and you basically create a new API key by giving it a uh, certain name and uh, granting it uh, the right scope, which in this case is buildings, colon, read, and general. Uh, so those two things and uh, a quick name, and then you can create that key. That key looks like a certain length of uh, a string, basically that has numbers and letters and different types of symbols in it. And that's your unique identifier that allows you to log into the API programmatically, which you'll see in the next, uh, in the next video. Uh, so kind of navigating this, this platform and understanding how uh, this whole system works, there's a lot of information here. And you know, one of the parts of that is the documentation, the API documentation. So here you can see that the onboard platform is created. Uh, the guys there have created this um, user uh, guidebook or documents that allow you to understand installation, accessing API, querying the data model, querying building specific information. All of these different things are gonna be very useful for you. And we're gonna cover some of those in the upcoming videos as well. Um, so in order to show you how to use the platform in uh, this video and the upcoming videos, I'm going to be using the Kaggle platform. Kaggle is a free, free to use platform that uh, is full of all different kinds of, of resources for implementing and learning data science with some of the most popular things being its competitions. Um, you can you can see that yeah it, well first of all inside Kaggle there are tons of public data sets tons of public notebooks of you know using Python R and other languages lots of different types of data sets that you can play with um, uh, you can take little micro courses there are of course like I said competitions these are data, machine learning competitions that allow you to understand how to uh, compare yourself compare your skills to other other professionals or other people learning. And Kaggle is a great, it's just basically a great platform. If you haven't used a great platform to learn um, how to do data science. And there was a big competition in 2019 called the ASHRAE Great Energy Predictor 3 competition uh, that's on here. There's also resources that we use in our edX uh, course or this the course that I teach for my students. And I'll be using this in these videos to show you how to um, how to start, just examples of how to interface with the API and start accessing the data. So to do that, uh, I've locked this, this frame here is I've logged into my account. Uh, if I go to my Kaggle account, you can see that I have actually a bunch of data sets here that you can play around with. These are unrelated to the competition, but there are good ways to learn. Um, and then there's a, a section here that's called code. And what we're gonna go through in the upcoming uh, videos is actually a notebook that was developed uh, by a uh, data scientist that, that, that I work with. Her name is Bianca. She created this notebook called RTEM Introduction. So what you'll be finding in, a, in, the, in, the, um, in this video uh, explanation is gonna be a link to this notebook 
that allows you to uh, look at this notebook, to visualize it. You can scroll through um, here and see that, you know, there's kind of a story. You notice that it's somewhat of kind of like a report. You have a little bit of text explanation here, and then you jump into these things, which are called cells, which have actual Python code in them, which we'll show in the upcoming videos. And you can actually clone this notebook. So you create, if you create a Kaggle notebook, you can actually, right now, this button up here in the upper right hand says edit. That's because it's my notebook. If this was you seeing this in your own account, you would see uh, a button here that allows you to copy this notebook. Uh, when it's public, when it's it's live, basically. And when you copy that notebook, you're going to end up with uh, something that looks like this. This is kind of the user interface of the Kaggle notebook that shows the, this is kind of an edit mode in a sense, where you can see, uh, like I said, there's this explanation. Here you have what's called uh, a cell with code in it. You can um, add code by you know, creating new cells by you know, this little plus code button. You can execute cells, so if, uh, there's nothing. You know, I, could, I could put some Python code in here, x equals one, and then print x. Uh, that little chunk of code, when I implement it either through the, the triangle, little symbol, or shift enter works. Those of you that have used Jupyter Notebooks know that this Kaggle environment is very similar to a Jupyter Notebook. Um, you can, you know, there's file menus of, you know, adding and uploading and downloading and different ways to run the notebooks, etc. And you'll see in the upcoming videos how this kind of notebook environment works. Um, so this is just a way for you to understand how to, uh, you can follow along in my upcoming videos in chunk by chunk, code by code, but you can also copy that and actually replicate it in your own notebook. The one caveat though, remember, is that you'll have to create your own API key. You can't use the one that I have in these notebooks. In fact, it's hidden from you. You'll have to create that API key. And in upcoming videos, I'll show you how to insert that key into your own notebook or your own copy of this notebook. Um, there are other ways that you can use this example without using Kaggle. If you're not interested in using Kaggle, uh, you can use the Jupyter platform itself. You can actually go to file and uh, download the notebook and then start that notebook as a Jupyter notebook within uh, your own environment, on your own computer. And, and I, I recommend using uh, um, an environment like Anaconda to actually do something like that, to create the Python and, no, and Jupyter environment. I use Kaggle because it's very easy to get started and show people without them having to implement anything in their own computers. So stay tuned for a couple more videos where I go into details of this notebook and show you how to extract uh, to tap into the API, use your API key, and pull out data and start even visualizing data uh, in, a, in a cool way to get you started in this competition. So good luck and see you in the next video.